Hey guys, this is Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you all the functionality of the DJI Mavic Mini controller. Now, if you're not a new person to flying drones, and especially to the Mavic Mini, then this video may not be for you, but if you are a beginner and new to flying drones and you wanna know all the functions of the DJI Mavic Mini controller, then this video is most definitely for you. I'm gonna be diving into you know, how to use it, what it can do, and all of its specifics around the controller. So if you're looking for that information, this video is definitely for you. Otherwise, I have some other great videos that you can check out by clicking up there. But with that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, so before taking off, I wanna show you how you first off get the controller when you get it immediately out of the box. So this is how it should look to you know open it up. You just pop everything open. Down here are where your joysticks are. So you take these out and you just screw them right into their positions. So after that, now you're gonna notice there's nowhere to you know, plug in your phone. So you're gonna need to look in the box and you will get a set of three cables. So DJI provides three cables. They give a micro USB. So if your phone has a micro USB connection, you got that. It also comes with a USB-C and a lightning adapter for iPhones. So I'm gonna use the lightning adapter. So all you gotta do is make sure you grab the rectangle micro USB end, plug that into the side here. Make sure this is open a little bit because what you're gonna do is you're gonna tuck this cable down just to put it there. And now it should fit into this space. So when you fold it up, you don't have to worry about taking that cable out. You just leave it in permanently, which is fantastic. And I love this about the controller because it's all hidden away when you want to put the controller away. But with that being said, most of the time cases on larger phones will not fit into this controller, sadly. So you're probably gonna wanna pop off your case. If you have a smaller phone, you should be fine. But for me, I have to take off that case every time because it just makes it too big. So you just plug in your phone, plop it in like so, and you are all set. So to turn on the controller, it's the same as the drone, but if you don't know, you just press once, press and hold the second time, and it will turn on the controller and you should see the status lights as so. At this point, you can open up the DJI Fly app and you should feel your phone buzz because it recognizes that the controller is plugged in. Now you can click on connect aircraft. So once it's here, now's the time to turn on your drone. Alrighty, so once this is on, you are all set to fly now. Of course, I am getting a compass calibration, but that's not part of this video because this is all controller based. Now, before taking off, I do wanna mention there are a couple things that you're gonna wanna check before taking off with the controller. So first of all, how the controls function. By default, it should be in B mode, but you can check that by clicking on the three dots, clicking on control, and then scrolling down a little bit, you will find stick mode. So when I said mode B, I actually mean mode two. Mode two is the most typical mode that controllers will be in, but you can change it between these other three. So I would suggest not changing that unless you have a purpose of doing so and that you fully understand what the controller will be doing in that mode. Um, so I would not change it. I would just leave it in mode two. That is the default mode. So with that being checked, now is time where you can take off. So now that you're at this point, there are a couple ways to take off. So first of all, you can do it the easy way, which you know it may be easy to some people and may be easier the other way to others. But the easiest way is possibly just to click the take off button here on your app. So to do that, you just click on the button, click on take off, press and hold. And once you let go, the drone will take off. So that's the easiest way. I'm gonna land and show you the second way. So the second way honestly isn't much harder. It's just more of an advanced way to do it. You just have to remember how to do it. And that is with the CSC command. And what the CSC command is, is it is basically the emergency shut off, but it's also the emergency shut on, I guess. So you can turn on your drone propellers by doing the same command. So to do that, you just press your controls to the center and as you can see, I can shut off the propellers as well, or to the outside. So that is the CSC command, and you're gonna wanna remember that if you ever encounter an emergency situation where you need to shut off the propellers in the air or it's about to crash into something, sometimes it's better to just shut off the propellers to prevent injury and stuff like that. So anyways, once you've performed that, you just press up on the left joystick, as long as you're in mode B, and there you go, you now have liftoff. So one thing to make note of, once you are in the air, 
you're gonna wanna make sure that you go and point these antenna so they are perpendicular to the ground. Typically, that's the most common way of adjusting the antenna. You can make them up and down straight like that, but typically you don't fly like this. You typically have your remote controller up at about a 45 degree angle because that's just easiest to see your screen. So I typically put the, you know, the antenna here at the back at a 45 degree angle. You want to make sure that the flat end of the antenna is pointed towards the drone. You don't want it to be pointed straight like this because you're gonna have terrible range and it's actually better when the antenna are placed like this towards the drone. So it is really close right now, so it's not affecting it for me to move it around like this. But if you are flying further away, it is important that you have that oriented correctly. So with that being said, to fly around, you basically got your up, down, you have spin left, spin right, and then you have forward movement, backward movement, and left and right. So to me, I think mode two is just the easiest way of learning to fly a drone because all you have to remember is this one is your directions, left, right, forward, backward. And then this one has to do with spinning and up and down, which is great. So it's pretty easy to remember. And once you get that down, you should be set to flying your drone. So something that you're gonna wanna know, especially if you're flying far away and oh no, you can't find your drone or you know it loses connection to your controller and you don't know what to do and in that scenario you might be frantically figuring out like oh no how do i get my drone back it's actually quite easy so if you lose control on the app you want to know that this return to home button right here you just press and hold and your drone will immediately return to home now you're going to want to make sure that you press and hold because if you just you know tap it that doesn't do anything. So you need to press and hold and your drone returns to home, as you can see here, which great, glad it's returning to home. To cancel return to home, you can either press the button on the remote controller or on the app if you have control on the app. So that is something good to know as well if it's about to run into something. But to make sure that it doesn't run into something, you're gonna wanna make sure on your app, this is something that you should do every time you take off, not just right now while I'm in the air, but something that you're gonna to wanna to make sure to do before takeoff every time is to click on these three dots, go back to safety and go and adjust the auto RTH altitude. And RTH is the return to home. So just make sure that this is set to a height that will pass any buildings, trees, structures, really anything that could be in your flight path so when it's automatically coming home, you don't have to worry about it running into anything. So this is something that you're typically gonna want to adjust before you take off, depending on your scenarios. For me, because I fly around here so frequently and because most of the time things just get cleared by 200 feet, I usually have my RTH set at around 220 feet, which is right now a little bit less than that, but only by 0.2 of a foot, so not that big of a deal. So after going over those, those are pretty much the key things that you're gonna wanna know when flying a drone, but now I'm gonna be moving into the fun things. So first of all, when flying your drone, you'll know, obviously it has the camera on it, and you're probably gonna wanna know how do you take photos and videos. If you don't really know this already, on the back of the controller, there are two buttons. So one button here on your right side is the camera button. So this is a shutter button, so you don't have to worry about touching the phone or the app. You just press the button and it will take a photo. As well as on your left side, there is a video recording button. So this will stop and start video. And also here while I'm on the back is the gimbal adjuster. So let me show you what those do. So here on the front, now you can see on the screen, once I press this record button, it pretty much immediately begins recording on the app, which is great. You can stop it, of course, by pressing the button on the app as well. Also, to take a picture, just use that same button. I do wanna note that if you are in video mode and you press the shutter button, this goes for both modes. If you press it once, it won't immediately begin doing what you want it to do because it's changing to that mode when you press it once. But once you press it a second time, it will now take a photo. So these photos and videos will be saved to the drone SD card as long as you have an SD card in there. So if you wanna change these same modes on your phone and not have to worry about the controller, which I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but if you wanna do that, you can do that simply by just clicking the button here above the shutter 
and you can change between modes. And now here on the bottom, you'll see there's something called Quick Shot, and you may be wondering, what is Quick Shot? Well, you know, you can toy with that yourself, but I'm hoping to make a video relatively soon talking about Quick Shots if you don't know anything about them, so stick around for a future video about those. But when recording, the default settings are typically 1080p, 30 frames per second, but if you want to up the resolution, you can change that by clicking 2.7K, which is what I typically shoot in because that's the highest resolution possible. And you can also change your frame rates on the app. So that's super easy. And as far as the camera goes, you can change if you wanna take a single shot, which is just one photo, or you can also do time shots, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a timer. It's not typically used that much, but it is good that that setting is there. So after that, you know, your camera at this point is just statically staying where it is. Um, to move it though, you can use that joystick here on the back and that allows you to move the gimbal up and down. You can move it straight down and you can move it basically anywhere in between as well as straight up. Not straight up in the air, but you know, 90 degrees to the ground. You can adjust how fast that gimbal moves by clicking on the three dot settings once again, going to the control and then going down to advanced gimbal settings. So once you click on advanced gimbal settings, you can select how fast the pitch is. So this is how fast it moves up and down. And then pitch smoothness is how fast it rotates. So what I mean by that, so if I adjust it here right now, you'll see it starts off really slow and it ends pretty smooth. So this is if you don't wanna to have to worry about, you know, stopping the gimbal yourself you can just let go and it keeps going, which I don't typically like this that much myself, so I leave it generally lower. This is what zero looks like. It stops immediately once you let go of the controller. As far as the pitch speed, again, this is how fast it moves up and down. It can move pretty dang fast. I don't know why you'd wanna be moving that fast, but it is there if you need that. You can also do this thing where you say allow upward gimbal rotation. And what this allows you to do is what I was talking about earlier, it's stopping at 90 degrees. It'll allow you to go past 90 degrees and you can look way up at the sky. Now, this is something that I typically don't like using because you can get props in your frame. Not so much with the Mavic Mini, but with other drones, you can get them in there and that can be annoying sometimes. So if you wanna look up at the sky for some reason, you can turn that on, but I generally leave that off by turning it off. Now that you've been out, you've taken photos, you've taken videos, and you are ready to come down and land, well, first of all, you can either do your return to home or you can manually return. I'm gonna manually return right now, and then I'll show you the different ways that you can land the drone. So once your drone has come close to the ground, the Mavic Mini, with its downward facing sensors, makes landing so incredibly easy. DJI definitely was looking out for their beginners out there. So because it has those downward facing sensors, you can just go and pull down on the controller joystick and the drone will land itself. And it will shut off the propellers. You don't have to do literally anything at all. But if you don't wanna use that way and you wanna use their auto land, you can click the land button, press and hold like before, let go and the drone will land itself as well. I'm not touching the controller. It will do this all automatically. I generally don't like this because it adds this additional step where you have to click OK, and then it finally lands. So the process is a little bit slower than if you just manually land yourself, but it is still nice to have for those of you who don't like doing it by yourself. And so yeah, that is pretty much it as far as this remote controller goes. It's pretty basic, there's not too much here. Other Mavic controllers do have quite a bit more packed onto them, so yeah, that is there. But as far as everything else goes, that's pretty much it for the controller. There's nothing else here on the back, so you know, there's not too much to worry about this controller. One final thing I suppose is the battery indicator. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to this. Generally, the battery of the controller lasts so much longer than the batteries for the drone itself because the controller isn't using that much power. It's just transmitting a signal and taking in inputs. So you don't really have to worry about that, but still pay attention to the battery here. This is for the controller, not the drone. So just know that for the drone, you check up in your top right of the app. As far as shutting off the controller, you're gonna wanna make sure you turn off the drone first and then turning off the controller by doing the same thing as power up. And you know, simply press once, press twice, and you'll see the lights 
power down. And as soon as you hear that sound, that means that the controller is off and you are all set to stow away the controller. And now with all that information being put in front of you, I hope this was helpful to you. Of course, this isn't that super daunting in comparison to other DJI controllers, but if you're new to the Mavic Mini, I hope you still found this video valuable. And if you did, make sure to let me know by clicking the thumbs up button down below. Also share this video to other friends that you may have that just got their Mavic Minis as well. Also, if you want to see future videos from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, check out my last video by clicking up there, and some random videos should be down there. With that being said, that is pretty much it for this video. See you in the next one. Peace.